So, welcome on to this Solrend Reaper build guide update for patch 1.2. This is obviously a Morgoth and Solrend and Alchemist Ring Reaper, so it's kind of a like iconic build, kind of a classic. You have the Solrend weapon, the Morgoth four piece set, as well as the Alchemist two piece ring set. And this is basically almost all you have for gear. You also want the Elena's necklace on top, and then a Agor's Eternal Vigil as well as a Gaga Waste Guard and a pair of Reaper Pants usually. And then for defense, I personally like to go for Serenity, but if you can go like for something more offensive, if you're playing softcore, right? But the hardcore, I would like pretty much always play Serenity here. Uh, overall, this is a, well, kind of not super tanky uh, melee build, but it is focused more on like a, like kiting or like hit and run playstyle, right? So you have Shadow Strike as your main ability, uh, Bone Harvest is your like secondary main ability, and you're not really like attacking all too much in between, right? You're just like using ABB, you're using Ring of Steel, you're using like El Omen, you gotta like use all these debuffs. You have also like the Blade Spirits out, right? That like help you with damage and like procking some devotions for you. So overall, it is rather like it's not really like a face tanker build, right? Like it's more like you hit all your skills and you can like run away, right? Dodge away, engage, dodge away, engage again, right? Your Shadow Strike cooldown is really really low. So you can do that like very nicely. Um, and you can, with this playstyle, defeat pretty much everything in the game. Maybe not Crate of Entertainment, I didn't try that yet, and I wouldn't necessarily suggest this build for a Crate of Entertainment fight either. But you can do like SR farming, like 80 to 81, 75 to 76 rather for farming, and like 80 to 81 I did just to like, you know, showcase that the build can do it. Uh, you can kill Ravager, as you can see here, you can kill Mogdrogan as well, as you would be able to see from the video, um, or like the gameplay after this. Um, so yeah, I mean, everything you can c kill, even Karagaja as well, um, as long as you like, you know, play around the build's uh, strengths and don't face tank all too much, right? Because while we do have high armor from the Morgoth set, we have like terrible physical resistance. I mean, honestly, it's like only the physical resistance that's like really terrible. Everything else is definitely acceptable. And your leech is also like really good, like 26% here, right? Your attack speed is a bit lacking, of course. Like it's only like what, 156%. But as I said, like you don't really like attack much because this location looks like this, right? You have Shadow Strike maxed out. You have the uh, Nidalas Justifiable Ends maxed out. You have Nightfall maxed out. So that is like your primary skill. Right? This is the skill that you're playing here. Then 1 point ABB and then a max out lethal assault to amplify uh, your core damage or flat core damage, which will be applied to like all other attacks, right? Then we have Ring of Seal, 1 point here, 1 point in Circle of Slaughter to make enemies fumble, and like 1 point in Ring of Frost to also um, well, like freeze enemies and like actually deal core damage with this skill as well. Which, well, the damage is kind of negligible on the skill, but it's like, I mean, it's kind of nice for CC and so on, and the fumble is insane against bosses, so you always want to pick this. And you got like only 1 point in Blade Spirits, I think, giving me 10 points here, which means I could actually go to 24 points if I really wanted to, but I have like no other modifiers for this and 24 points is quite a big investment. So I'm like mainly just using this to proc a like devotion proc, in this case the Hand of Ultos. Um, Pneumatic Burst, 12 points at least, right? More for more OA if you want. Uh, 16 points Shadow Dance actually because this build is, well, rather like dodge based actually. Like with the boots, the Wraith Walker boots, you have very nice dodge chance with these proc. And uh, then we have the Elemental Awakening, right? Just like for from Frostburn damage and Elemental damage. Only four points here, as you can see, not all too many. Um, and then Velo Shadow is four points in here to get to 10 points. Night Shield, of course, you want to max out, right? Because you don't really have all too much code resistance reduction as a Reaper. And then 22 points in Phantasmal Armor because you are getting, um, well, you, you are getting like tons of armor from the set. Um, I think it's also like percent armor. Yeah, 22% armor, so like the more flat armor you have, for example, from this like skill, right? The more base armor you have, the more uh, valuable that's gonna be. Um, Anatomy of Murder, honestly, only one point. It's totally fine, like 16% cunning, damage to humans is fine. You're not really like scaling your damage with cunning, so cunning is only here for OA and like some additional damage to humans, sure, why not? Uh, one point in Mercy's Repertoire, right? This is just like for percent code and frostburn damage. It's generally like less effective than like Elemental Awakening, so we're not like putting as many points here as we are putting into Elemental Awakening. For the Necromancer side of the things, we have one point in Bone Harvest, one point in Dread, 
and then 12 points in soul harvest to like max out soul harvest right and also have a one point between harvester of death to like amplify the damage that i'm dealing with this skill by another like 20 percent however ideally i want like more points like way more points than bone harvest but i'm a little bit point starved here at least for hardcore you could like pull some points from elemental awakening or like pull some points from shadow dance sure you could do that um and then like try to max out bone harvest instead right if you put like eight here and then like another three here you would have like 11 more points to play around with and i could you could like get bone harvest to um, deal more damage for you but overall i use this spec because it felt like i don't know more balanced than like tank here for hardcore at least uh, spectral binding you max this out for like the well only health and oa honestly the eighth of damage is kind of useless unfortunately ill omen 20 points because you want uh, 30 percent damage reduction and also this skill will have uh, code resistance reduction from the Morganath set, right? You will have 22% uh, code resistance reduction, 10% from the helmet, and another 12% from the 4-piece set. And then, of course, also, like, Mark of Torment, right, for percent absorption. Without the skill, like, any neck commands, it just kind of feels like paper, so you gotta play it. And then Harbinger of Souls, this one does not give you, like, any uh, cold percent damage. However, it does give you, like, vitality damage, which you convert to cold damage. And it does give you, like, casting speed and attack speed, which is nice for, like, well, casting and attacking with all your skills, right? Um, and yeah, since we have, like, vitality to cold conversion from the Gargoyles Waste Guard, the flat damage from Soul Harvest as well as from the Harbinger of Souls is um, very nice to, to get, right? For Devotions... I am playing something rather defensive. This is like a very like specific 1.2 um, devotion page. This wouldn't have been as good like last patch, for example. So we are playing Crab for defense. We're playing Hyrian for like a mix of defense and offense as well. Um, Murmur, of course, for resistance reduction, right? You always need this on any single, like every single cold build, right? Um, Elemental Storm, kind of same thing for like resistance reduction, right? A must have. And then for defense, also we have Turtle. Uh, we have the Kraken, of course, for all two-handers. You have Kraken, you have Panther for OA. You have Chariot as well for, like, OA and, like, some defenses, like, Sunrus over here. Um, Amatok for just, like, some damage and, like, damage on the proc. Right, kind of nice here. And then, of course, also the Hand of Ultos. And why Ultos? And why not, like, something like Leviathan, for example? Or why not Yugol? Well, Yugol, you don't need the Necromancers because you get damage reduction from Ill Omen anyway. And Leviathan is nice, however, it needs like 13 green and 13 purple, so it's kind of a big like investment. And if you want to play like Hyrian, Crab, Turtle, Chariot, Murmur and so on on this patch, you kind of only have like Ultos left as an option. And Ultos is honestly very very good with Morganoth set, because the Morganoth set has Lightning to Cold conversion as well, right? Uh, you can see I don't really have like high rolls here, they're kind of terrible actually. The conversion rolls i should like probably get some like higher conversion rolls here and then the bud would be probably performing even better but that's very nice because uh like this note over here right the flat lighting damage here is getting converted at least partially to cold and the skills proc also like the hand of Ultras itself also gets converted to like cold and frostburn damage um, the nodes themselves also give you code and frostburn damage, so like you're not really like losing all too much there. And this also means that you don't need to play Viper, right? The Viper devotion would otherwise be the one that you would use for percent, like 20% reduced targets elemental resistances, right? This one over here, but since we're playing Ultos, we don't need Viper. And that's basically it for the build. Um, like all you need to know about the build, the setup and so on. So I'll just like do a quick dummy kill time here maybe. Let's turn on the timer and then you can also check out the remaining uh, gameplay at the end of this video that's gonna be like an sr 80 to 81 run as well as like kala ravager and milk dragon kills of i believe so yeah enjoy those i should probably like, use pet attack right what the fuck am i doing this is like not a good dummy kill time there we go oh well because otherwise we don't like proc uh, one of my skills here right? all right it's still like 15 seconds kill time here uh, even with like me not using pet attack right away to like proc the spirits so you can probably get to down to like 12 or 13 seconds right so this is pretty pretty good overall all right let's try again actually all right we're gonna start at like 50 seconds here let's go you're gonna make sure to like press pet attack every single like every now and then to like also um get the burst from the portals 
Alright, there we go. Yeah. I mean, 16 seconds, 15 seconds, something like that, but it's like pretty good overall. Pretty decent damage for a build like this that isn't like specced fully for damage, as I said, because it's like hardcore, right? Even like playing a Seal of Might to get more like tankiness here. This could be like something way more offensive, like some Seal of, uh, like, some, just like some Cold Stone, for example, like Seal of Blaze or um, Seal of the Night, right? Uh, yeah. Or like a more offensive relic as well. Anyway. How far shall we go?
done.
Dragon, let's drink all the juice. All the juices, the juice must flow. Uh, lightning and OADA. Uh, what? No. There we go. Okay, he has a uh, new Sunder ability. No? I think it's Storm Sunder, right? This one right here. So you glow with orange, cast a storm, you move out of the storm, you re-engage. You're still in the storm. How much is it actually? <clears throat> hmm. hmm, 70%. Okay, yeah, you really don't want to stand inside of that. Is it still inside? How? Oh. Dude, he casts it like crazy now, though. <laughs> Doesn't he? He just ra has a rather high initial time timeout, but then he casts it like every couple seconds. Okay, stage 2, he deals like more damage, has more absorption, right? Once he's half HP, he enrages. It lasts like only for like one second or something, so like as soon as you move out of the storm You take like less damage pretty quickly actually Oops This seems way less annoying when you're playing like a caster, honestly. Jesus, the fucking I, I I used the wait, but I got stuck at the tree. <laughs> I waited on the tree. <laughs> stuck on the tree. What the fuck, man? Wrecked by a tree. Fucking hell, dude.
I mean, yeah, the, the fight got a bit more dynamic because you have to you now like really not stand inside a cloud. But other than that, it's pretty much still the same thing, right? You don't stand in the cloud. And you kill him. Seems alright. What is this? 4.50 seconds is 7.5 minutes, right? So it's like a 5.5 minute kill, maybe. I mean, that's okay for Mugdogan. It's acceptable. It's totally alright. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to check out and expand the description below for Grim Trolls links and related playlists. Shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon, YouTube, and Twitch. Without you guys, this channel wouldn't even exist. If you are new to this channel and you like my content, feel free to like, subscribe and head over to my Patreon to support me. All of your support will be used to create more Grim Dawn guides on YouTube like this, as well as additional Grim Dawn content for the upcoming community seasons. If you haven't heard of or played a community season yet, you can do so at any point, even when it's offline, via the website grimdawnleague.com. I hope you enjoy the content and I'll see you around on the next one.